My guest today is Mercedes Bernard. Mercedes, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm uh, awesome. Good. What, uh, what do you do? So I'm a senior software engineer and an engineering manager mm -hmm. here at Tandem. Yeah, and I- Thanks for letting us use your office. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I also run a community here in Chicago called Dev Together. That's exactly what I'm gonna talk about. Cool. Dev, I just recently learned about Dev Together. Tell me about it. So it's a community and I, I really emphasize like the community piece and not just an event, huh. um, but it's a community that's focused on helping those early in their career or just starting their development careers connect with experienced technical mentors um, to help them find their first development job or you know kind of learn the ropes, get feedback on their code, learn source control, learn Git, like some of those overlooked skills that are just assumed to be picked up as you go that okay. you know you don't really get somebody actually teaching you you know best practices and how to do it and um, pair programming uh, things like that uh, this is a nonprofit thing you're doing all volunteers or is well, yeah it, or? all volunteers I mean technically we're not incorporated as a nonprofit okay. or anything That's we're just not. yeah but yeah it's just um, me and then you know people that uh, want to come join us every mm -hmm. month all right, maybe somebody will listen to this and... Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> Tell me about some of the things that you're doing for these novice developers. Yeah, so um, we meet the second Tuesday of every month, and what I'm calling like our flagship events are our code review and pairing events. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of what started the whole community and like where this it all grew out of this idea was that when you're first learning to code, you're mostly focused on like getting it working and you very rarely get feedback from somebody who's experienced who can say like oh yeah it works but like have you thought about trying to do this or like you know we can clean it up this way or like learning those Make it more efficient more yeah. testable more maintainable maybe. exactly um and code reviews just like aren't really a thing that you get a lot in boot camps or in when you're in college like it's mostly like turn in your assignment okay cool you're done so you okay. never get that feedback I, I wasn't a computer science major yeah well and if you're self-taught like you also don't get feedback because it's just you alone yeah um so trying to to work in that feedback loop so what we do is um people who are just getting started can submit you know hey here's the code that i want to have reviewed during you know next month's event and then we partner you up with a mentor who knows that stack or okay. you know the language, the framework, whatever it's written in, and they complete a code review prior to the event. And then at the event, you pair program and work through the feedback together so that you are able to ask questions. What do you mean by this? Um, can you show me that? And you know, if it's something bigger, like let's talk about how relational databases work. Like you right. have that face-to-face -face interaction, you can whiteboard through it, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. That sounds like a big commitment from the mentors. How did you find these folks willing to get this commitment? Yeah, so it's actually one of the things, one of the main focuses of our community is to make sure it's high value, low commitment. Okay. Um, and so because the mentees say, here's the pull request or the, the small repo that I've been working on that I want reviewed for this month. Mm -hmm. uh, we tell the mentors, take about an hour prior to the event for feedback. Okay. Anything more than an hour, like you're, you're not gonna have time to pair program through six hours worth of code review, you know? So we say like, you know, and we ask the mentees ahead of time, what specifically are you looking for feedback on? So they might say my model design, or they might say like, there's a bug that I just can't figure out. Mm -hmm. And so the mentor can focus their review on just these areas. And okay. then um, at the event, it's only an hour and a half. It's, you know, six to 7.30. We're not looking for anybody to like give up dinner time. Uh, people have other, you know, family obligations. And so it's just an hour and a half focused pairing on you know, the code review feedback, the thing that you were stuck on or that you were looking for feedback on. Um, and then the next month, you can submit the same code, different code, but there's no guarantee you'll get the same mentor. So that yeah, helps. Different one. Yeah, and so that helps because then the mentor can say like, oh, I can do it in May, but I'm traveling June and July, so I won't be back till August. And that's fine because it's not a long term, like you are assigned, you know, Bernard or whoever to be your mentee. It's more of like on a month to month basis. Just giving, brother, Bernard, Bernard. Yes, Bernard, Bernard. Um, 
just on a month to month basis getting feedback like as you go. Uh, nice. Uh, so uh, is it mostly code reviews and pair programming or is there more to it than that? Well, so thank you. Actually, those are like our, our flagship events, but yep. we've also been doing um, for those in the community, specifically like a lot of the mentors who want more public speaking experience. We've done some lightning talk events where mm -hmm. we pick a theme, we get, you know, seven or eight lightning talks submitted, and then we do a night of those so mm -hmm. the mentors can teach something, they get experience, the mentees learn something. It's like a tech Toastmasters. Yeah. Those are actually always really popular yeah. events. They're like way more popular than I was expecting. Um, and then we've also done some workshops. So we've done a um, React workshop because managing state in React can be challenging for people just getting started to like understand the control flow. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a unit testing and Heroku deployment workshop um, because again, like when you are just learning to code, those types of things of like how to get it from my IDE to where someone can see it, mm -hmm. that's also, that's usually a pretty big gap of understanding. Um, and then in August, we're gonna be doing a Git workshop to understand like branching strategies and like what, when you're typing these things into the command line, like what is actually happening and like how can you get I back to it. I still struggle with that sometimes. Yeah, it's, yes. I actually just learned how Git works under the hood, and it like mind blown. And I'm like, I've been doing this for almost ten years. Now. I'm not sure if I know how it works under the hood, but I know the dozen or so commands that I need. Yeah, exactly, right. And so just trying to get them to understand, like, it's not magic, right. and that like they will know. Oh, if if I need to get back three commits, or like if something happen like how can I preserve my work and like move yeah, around. Yeah I, I totally get that. It's, uh, the, I, I can, uh, when I first started using Git's a good example. I, yeah. I learned a few commands and I just repeated them over and over again and that worked great until yeah. it didn't. And then you're like I don't and know. And then I, in order to go further I had to understand what's the difference between a pull and a merge and a push. I had to understand what was happening. Yeah. And uh, I didn't have to understand the inner workings of it but I had to know you know uh, this concept of that there are branches and that there is a, <laughs> there's right. always a merge going on. Well, I think Git is a perfect example of one of those things that like nobody or very few people think to explain from start to finish right. and they're just like, so you just commit, git commit and like, and then you add and you like pull <laughs> and they just like start saying these things and people learn like, well, if I type this in, it does what I need, right, right. but. The difference between add and commit, I think is a big one. Yeah. Add, commit and push, they all kind of do the same thing. They, they yeah. Have, it gets it somewhere, eat. but right. where does it go <laughs> is like the difference. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious, when you started this, um, did you start with mentors? Did you start with uh, people that had a need for mentors? Or was it just an idea you had in your head? It was kind of an idea I had in my head. Actually, I was working at Tandem, and we have an apprenticeship program. And so when we opened the applications for apprentices, we get all these code samples. And I realized that there was this big gap between what people are learning in whatever academic background they have, mm -hmm. whether it's self-taught boot camps or in school, like in traditional four-year college, and like actual industry code. Um, so, and there was like no support for those who like came out and weren't ready for the industry to get ready for yeah. the industry. What you know? really need is uh, to work for a company yeah. with that kind of mentoring. Exactly. And so like, obviously in an apprenticeship, you can't hire all hundred people who apply. Right. Um, and so I started trying to think through like, well, what, like, these are all, these will all be amazing developers. And like, I would love to work with almost all of them, but like how, so how can I support them to get them there? Yeah. Um, and so then this idea came up of like, okay, well, what are some of the skills or like some of the activities that you don't get as you like, graduate and then look for that job like how do you continue improving during that time period and that's kind of where this idea came from are you getting the same people each month that's what's really interesting we get about 50 50 so mm -hmm. from month to month like 50 percent are repeats and then 50 percent are new mm -hmm. um which is great because it actually makes the events so easy to explain because most right. of the time i'm like ah well the person you're paired with knows what's going on uh, like they'll kind of it's kind of like a a wheel that just keeps spinning and then it makes my job like way easier because now I can walk into an event and go, you all know what the deal is. Like here's a five minute intro, but like do it. It'll make more sense if you do it than right. if I explain it. All right. So uh, you've had people, it's been a year, right? So, yeah. Uh, a year and 
almost two months. Okay, um, and are you getting, are the people that have been there for, from the beginning? How do you, are you, how's their progress? Is it, uh, it's, are you seeing that? Yeah, it's actually really great. So um, some folks, like on the mentor side, I have been getting either Slack messages or text messages from people who talk about like how it's changed their view of mentorship or how it's... Oh, how so? Uh, so I've actually got two examples where like one was somebody who was like, I, I've been doing this for so long, I forgot how hard it is to learn this stuff. Oh, okay. And that it like really increased their empathy with new hires because he was like, I just had so much distance from it that like pairing with somebody and having to, they were stuck on the difference between like a for loop and a while loop okay. and like working through that, he was like, oh yeah, this isn't easy. Like this doesn't just make sense. Like right. you have to learn it. Sure, nobody's born with this knowledge. Exactly, but he'd been doing it for, you know, almost 30 years, so he was like- Oh, for I, him, he thinks it's intuitive. It, exactly. Personal. And so like it increased his empathy. And then I also had somebody who actually just slapped me last week to check in and talking about all of the things that he's been doing with early career devs at his job and like, that he's now you know working with a team of them and that he's been like really involved in their progress and like involved in coaching them through you know oh the so you sparked the fire what yeah you did it was is like now taking place inside his organization it was really really cool yeah that's very satisfying um which and that was like those were the messages that i wasn't really expecting yeah. you know i was expecting the mentees which i get too of people who like will reach out and be like, I have an interview or like, I got a job offer and I don't know how to negotiate or like, <laughs> you know, they'll connect with me on LinkedIn and I'll see that they have clients and they're freelancing and oh, they're that's, like, that's you know, so gratifying. it is that they're like being able to, you know, code for money and like yeah. put this to work. It's great. Uh, and I understand that uh, you've inspired somebody in Madison, Wisconsin. Tell yeah. Me about that. So uh, her name's Christina Ruth and she, we met at that conference. I've been there. I've spoken there. Great. Conference much times. Cool. I'm speaking there next week. I won't be there next week. Oh, darn. <laughs> okay. But um, so we met there last year and I had been talking about Dev Together. And at that point, we had only done like two events, but um, the conference community really got behind it. And a lot of people were asking me about it. And she reached out afterwards and was like, I want to do something like this in Madison. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, okay, well, either do your, like, you can do your own thing and I can give you, like, some tips. She was like, no, actually, I'd really like to use the Dev Together name and I'd like to make this, you know, just broaden the community. Huh. Um, and so we came up with the idea of chapters. And so we, um, actually, I have a, a designer friend, Ale Salinas, who did all of our brand work and, like, make sure that we have a, a focused brand. And so, like, we make sure that everything we do goes together so that if we decide to grow this, like, we can continue bringing this to more cities. Excellent. Have you been out to Madison to one of those meetups? I haven't because she does them on the same nights we do ours. Oh, you should talk um, about that. Yeah, that so we so haven't cool been able to, to meet up yet. Uh -huh. um, and you've got uh, some of these me uh, mentees. They're they're moving on. They're starting with uh, as novices here at your meetup, and then they're out getting jobs and yeah. progressing. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. It's always fun to get those text messages. Uh, we're You're online at meetup, yes. right? Yeah, so we're on, uh, we use Meetup for like our RSVPs and okay. things like that. Um, and then we also have our website where we put up our blog or, you know, uh, keep track of upcoming events there as what well. What are those URLs? Uh, meetup is meetup.com slash dev together chai, as in Chicago, so C H I. Okay. And then uh, our website is devtogether.co. Dot co. Dot co. All right. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? Hmm. I don't think so. What are you speaking about at that conference? Oh, it actually kind of goes hand in hand with this. Uh, I'm going to be giving a talk called Fun and Friendly CS, so Fun and Friendly Computer Science, that's aimed at kind of breaking down and explaining some uh, CS topics that are used kind of as gatekeeping or as interview questions, so mm -hmm. big O notation, implement a linked list, those kinds of things, mm -hmm. um, and I'm using fun, accessible metaphors to explain what they are. I'm using those uh, metaphors in the code sample so that the variable names are actually relatable, you know what you're looking at, um, and just try to make it 
make people know that like if you didn't learn this in your education it's okay you're still a real cold a real <laughs> coder like don't let anyone gatekeep you out of this because it's good to know but you don't need it to be good at your job and like now you know it and so nobody can gatekeep you after this i remember the first time somebody asked me about big o notation yeah. it was in a job interview i had never heard of it before exactly apparently, apparently they must teach it in computer science classes they do and it's and i've never heard it since i've never actually had it come up in a project no and i've had people <laughs> you know who they're like well what is the what's the big o of that function and i'm like well, it works. Like, <laughs> I can't make it any more performant, so it doesn't matter if I know. Not really. Uh, apparently, it's important on tests. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so that's the whole point of the talk is to say, like, I'll explain it. You'll understand it. It's not that scary and intimidating, but also it's not vital. Like, you can get by without it, so don't let anyone gatekeep you. Mercedes, thank you so much. Thank you. Let's do this again!